conference will now be recorded. Hello, everyone. I'm Kristen Miller's own curator of collections and exhibitions at the Lauren Rogers Museum in Mississippi. And I'm here today with Phoenix Savage, who is one of the artists in our collections interventions, Mississippi Collegiate Art Faculty Invitational. Um, it's an exhibition that we were so proud to work on together. We It was about two years in the making and it opened up in March and unfortunately not a lot of people got to see it before it closed. So we're having a, a series of conversations with the artists to celebrate all of the hard work that they did and the beautiful things that they made for the exhibition. So before Phoenix and I get started, I just want to thank our sponsors of the exhibition, Community Bank and Sanderson Farms. So Phoenix, tell us a little bit about yourself, your background and how you became an artist. Hi, how are you? Um, I, I don't, I don't, I mean, do people really become an artist? <laughs> well, I'm not how, sure about that. Okay, how did you first know that you were an artist? Um, you know, again, it's, it's a very early um, intuition. I guess this is the word. So ever since I was a young kid, I was always creative. I was always exploring things. I was always engaging the creative process, asking my parents for materials to play with, to whatever. Um, and I was always, uh, I was the only girl. Um, and I didn't really like playing with my brothers. So I entertained myself mostly with my own doodling and and engaging and then I had um, grandparents who were very crafty so every time I went to visit them they were doing something different so one summer they were making rugs so I learned how to make rugs another summer they were doing ceramics at the uh, you know, Senior Citizen Center. So I learned how to do ceramics. Then they were making candles. So I learned how to make candles. And then they were making wine, <laughs> you know? So I never really learned how to make wine, but I thought it was interesting. And so I was always being exposed to something creative, that this is how you filled your time by doing things creatively. And so it just, it just kind of stuck, I guess. And I chose it as a profession. <laughs> And you have a lot of degrees in art and otherwise. Can you tell us a little bit about your education? <laughs> I do have a lot of degrees. Um, I think part of that comes from too much wandering. Um, but yeah, I have, uh, I have a, a, an associate's degree in advertising design. And from there, I have your traditional bachelor's degree in art. Um, and then I went on to get a master's in medical anthropology, actually, and then from medical anthropology, which I actually use in my art. Um, so anthropology, um, I have a degree in sculpture, just a master's degree in, in sculpture. And then I went on to get a, an MFA because ultimately the MFA is what's considered terminal in the industry. And I wanted to have that so that I could uh, secure a teaching position, which is what I have now. Um, so it just sort of turned out that way. And maybe I think when I got my first master's in anthropology, even though I was an artist at the time, I didn't have the confidence to believe that I had a portfolio that could get me into an MFA program. So I just kind of kept building, building, building until I felt I had a portfolio worthy of applying for an MFA program. And that's when I applied to Georgia State and was accepted into that program. So it took a while, but it's cool. <laughs> and so you ultimately became a professor at Tougaloo College. When did you start there? Um, I started six years ago. So this is the end of my sixth year. Um, I trust that this will come with a promotion. <laughs> but um, it's been a very, very interesting time. And it's uh, there's been great joys and great sorrows at the same time. When you Hello? Sorry, Phoenix, I lost you for a minute. I'll, I'll let it this Okay, no out. problem. 
I'll edit this part out of the video, so we'll we'll just go back in it. So I think uh, we got you were saying joys and sorrows. Um, and yeah, that was that was it. Just that it's joys and sorrows. Um, and I, you know, I'm here and I like being here. My studio is here on campus. Um, I frequently, and not with this uh, particular work that you guys have, but in many of the works that I've done since being here on campus, I've involved my students in the works. So they've been large scale installations, which require a lot of helping hands, particularly like when I had to make thousands of leaves, not make them, but paint them, uh, magnolia leaves. Um, so I involved students with that, my art appreciation class, that was their extra uh, credit uh, assignment, you know, come to my studio and help me paint leaves. Um, so that's 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 always joyful to do to involve them in my studio practice to involve students in my studio practice is is really a great deal of fun well and this exhibition celebrates and highlights the work of professors at colleges and universities across mississippi and um we wanted to kind of celebrate in your, in your own work and then how you are influential in the lives of your students works as students and their work as well. So we asked the professors who were involved in the exhibition to come to the museum and view our works in person and be inspired by something in our incredible collection um, that will that, that would inspire you to make your own point. So you chose this sculpture, Mother and Child by Elizabeth. Will you tell us a little bit about what appealed to you about this work? Well, I love her work, first of all. I actually met Elizabeth Catlett years ago in, um, there was an exhibition of hers in New Orleans, uh, I think 2010, something like that. And I went, I met her, I actually presented her with a small sculpture. And um, I don't think she kept it. <laughs> Somehow, I don't think it was her, but I think her son felt it was too much for her to take back on the plane. It wasn't very heavy, but it was It was a small sculpture made out of um, cast iron, and it was a a peapod, and it was called peapod. P I don't know peapod of possibilities or something like that. And it was in a very nice um, wooden box. Um, but somehow, I saw it to this day, I don't know whatever happened to my lovely peapod sculpture, um, but it was made for her and, and I just uh, thought it was really nice. But as far as her work is, um, you know, exceptional and I felt like of the things there, I wanted to respond to something by an African-American um, woman and I really liked the, the sculpture, uh, Mother and Child, and so I, I selected that one. Now I'm going to show your piece, Blessed is the Fruit of Thy Womb. If you can just describe what we're looking Great. for. I'm sorry. Um, That's okay. So there, there, are, there are 17 shadow boxes. Each box has a quilting or a quilt, a piece of a quilt as its background. Um, and inside of the box are two things. Besides the quilted background, you have a flower that is just a, made out of clay, just sort of a hand pressed flower. And then there are tags. Each tag reads the same. And the tag says, blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And then it has a name of a deceased person. Each deceased person has one thing in common that they were killed via the police. Um, and you have, uh, generally you will have also the the cause the cause of, of of not the cause but the 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 insidious rationale for their death so i looked through the papers and i would see that i don't remember the gentleman's name but he simply at the wrong time in the wrong place opened the door of a roof of a brooklyn apartment building and the happened to be police officers looking for someone but it wasn't the gentleman who opened the door so in the in all of what you read about this you will see this quote open door of rooftop building 
So I just, I looked for these salient little phrases that would show the insidious and the very, very benign activity that would not mean anything in the course of anyone else's day or life, but in the course of the lives of the people represented in the 17, 16 boxes, empty in the 16 boxes it was the it was the life or death moment for them so uh maybe for i think sarah blaine i don't know if she's in this but uh, it's going to be a larger series for me but in her case sandra blaine uh failure to uh indicate turning signal so these type of things become matters for which become life or death for the black body um and so i wanted to illustrate that in a very um, somewhat simple way. It's a very complex scenario, but I wanted to illustrate it in a very simplistic way. And I wanted to illustrate it through this confluence of, of this mother and child. For Catlett, she was embracing motherhood. I believe if, if I remember her story collect, she did not know her mother for very long. Um, and so her thing was always embracing that relationship of mother-child, mother-child. And so I wanted to look at it very differently. What happens when a mother loses a child? And so blessed is the fruit of thy womb um, comes from the Catholic rosary. And you have this notion of Mary and, and ultimately Mary loses her child. Um, through, again, this extrajudicial death type process. So I wanted to tie these things together historically and, and, and sort of rope them um, into this one um, impactful statement. Fascinating. And we've got a close-up of, of the piece actually in process. Do you want to describe so this is at? So this is... Yeah, so that's the quilting background. Each each square has a different uh, section of the quilt, so no, no two are alike. No two people are alike. Um, the flower is based on so each each of the uh, objects inside is actually the state flower. So I started looking for the state fruit. So, so you go through like a lot of research process. I started looking for the fruit, but not every state has a fruit. So then I had to go for state flower. So I want to tie these things together with the person. If the person was, you know, killed in Seattle, then I looked for, you know, what is the state flower for, for Washington State? Um, and did my best to make, <laughs> make that flower. I don't generally go around making flowers. So each one is just, it's very handmade. Um, just a matter of taking clay and, you know, just using my hands. Didn't want to like over, I didn't want to over render them or anything like that. That wasn't my goal. Um, and so each flower represents the state that the person was in at the time of their death. And then this is the un the unbaked. Um, this is the unbaked. So this one is, I think, something from California. I think this is supposed to be a poppy. So I don't really remember who it represents. And um, it is. Um, I think this one has been bisfired, but it hasn't been glazed yet. Okay. So when so you see that when they're glazed, they have different glazes on them. Yeah, when they were glazed, I used a um, indigo um, undercoating for them, and then um, fired them above the temperature that they should be fired at to get this really dark um, uh, coloration to them. Almost, almost kind of burnt like a burnt blue. <laughs> and so you say this is the beginning of the series, or are you going to? Yes, because to be honest with you, because I did not initially, this is probably something you face with artists, you explain the project, and I thought, great. My initial concept wasn't this at all. My initial concept was the whole blessed is the fruit of thy womb, but I wanted to actually make small sculptures. And when you explain that that's what I could not do, <laughs> Yeah, That's let, me explain, what I had to let, let me explain why not. Um, so the, the exhibition is in, 
is in our space that it, that we often have lectures and programs in and so it needs i wanted to have as little things on pot the little number of things on pedestals as possible so that it's easy it was easy kind of to clear the room if we needed to do that so um a few right. people choose three-dimensional objects from which to be inspired, but we asked everyone to be able to hang their own work on the wall to kind of keep that to a minimum. So you came up with a creative solution. Right, so yes, so you, ha you have to find a, an, an answer. Um, and so in finding an answer, I dwindled it down. The, the, the original ideal was the same, blessed as the fruit of thy womb. It was the same to use flowers or, or fruit. Well, again, I was going to use the flower of the fruit, but um, again, not everyone has a fruit, so I went for the flower. So in this case, I had to take those elements and just scale them back into something um, manageable as well as aesthetically um, meritable. And so that's what I came up with. Well, I think it turned out beautifully. Do you have- It looks lovely. This is my first time seeing it. Um, so I'm sorry that we all missed it. So I heard, so you're, so the show is actually going to close? Well, no, is we're, gonna gonna about, we're gonna, we're going to um, talk about extending the, the date, the end date of the show. Um, if everybody will let us keep their things later. And as soon as we know when we will be able to open up, we'll, we'll try to get another date on the calendar for a reception so that everybody can come and see the work in person and, and speak with the artists themselves. Do you have yeah, any I think this will be the first time I have never seen my work because when you're when you're doing it, particularly for me, because I work in parts or I work in installations, I never see the work until it's installed. Um, so it's always a treat to get to the gallery on the day of the opening to to see it. And usually I install it. So this is the first time that I've handed it off to someone and had it installed by someone else and it's the first time that i've not actually physically seen it in its um presentation so i'm very excited if you guys do extend it and if i'm able to um come down to see it i i would absolutely love that well it's a it's a gorgeous and very powerful work and so we we really appreciate you letting us have it for as long as we can and hopefully we'll be able to share it with the public in person but, but we're sharing it virtually as often and as much as we can until the time where we can see it in person. Great, so I think this much. is wonderful. You're so, you're so welcome. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Phoenix. We'll talk to you soon. Okay.